Hello, and welcome to today's training on navigating Medicare and Medicaid fraud and abuse. Nothing contained herein should be considered legal advice. High Tech Compliance Associates is not a legal firm, nor do we have attorneys on staff. All recommendations are from the HHS, OCR, OIG, CMS, and the guidelines set forth under HIPAA and the Omnibus Rule as reviewed by High Tech Compliance Associates' professionals. When it comes to understanding Medicare and Medicaid fraud and abuse, we need to understand three key points. First, we know, must know some key definitions of knowledge, intent, fraud, waste, and abuse. And we also must know that there are five laws associated with federal health care program fraud. And these five laws are the False Claims Act, the Anti-Kickback Statute, Physician Self-Referral Law, or also known as the Stark Law, Exclusion Authorities, and Civil Monetary Penalty Laws. And what we need to also talk about is what to do if you suspect Medicare or Medicaid fraud in your organization. Fraud, waste, and abuse. These are three key definitions that we need to know when it comes to understanding Medicare and Medicaid fraud. The main difference between these three is knowledge and intent. Fraud requires knowledge and intent. Waste and abuse require neither of those two. Fraud is knowingly and willfully executing or attempting to execute a scheme to defraud any health care benefit program. Waste are any practices that result in unnecessary cost to the Medicare program, such as overusing services. Abuse is when you act are actions that may directly or indirectly result in cost to the Medicare program. Now we will go over some examples of fraud, waste, and abuse. An example of fraud would be knowingly billing for services that did not actually happen. For example, if you had an appointment with a patient and then they failed to keep it, and then you still charge Medicare for it anyways. An example of waste would be ex ordering excessive laboratories that aren't relevant to the patient's needs. And any kind of an example of abuse would be unknowingly billing for brand name drugs when generics are dispensed. Again, like I said earlier, fraud requires intent to obtain payment and knowledge that the actions are wrong. Waste and abuse do not require intent and knowledge. Now we'll be going over the different laws associated with Medicare and Medicaid fraud in order to better understand it. The first one we'll go over is the False Claims Act. And the False Claims Act essentially means it is illegal to submit claims for payment to Medicare and Medicaid fraud that you know or should know are false or fraudulent. Fines can be up to three times whatever you build Medicaid, plus $11,000 per claim. And the definition of a claim is each individual billing, so the fines can rack up exponentially fast. And it's important to know that, what I said earlier, that it, you, it's either that you know that they are false or that you should know that they are false. And it also includes the whistleblower provision, which means that it's beneficial to you to um, report cases of Medicare and Medicaid fraud to the government. Now we will talk about the anti-kickback statute, which prohibits the knowing and willful payment of remuneration to induce or reward patient referrals. And remuneration is any kind of form of payment, not just cash. It can be in the form of dinners or expensive hotel rooms. Intent is a key element in this. There are many penalties for violating the anti-kickback statute, which include fines, jail terms, and even exclusion from participation in the federal health care program. And we must be aware as a physician, you are a magnet for kickback schemes. They will come to you and offer you lots of money in order for you to refer them for your patients to them. And it is not justified when you would have done the same thing even without the kickback. If you receive the kickback, it is against federal health care program laws. The Physician Self-Referral Law, also known as the Stark Law, is similar to the anti-kickback statute, but it refers more to the doctor's financial relationships. So it is illegal to uh, refer patients to any kind of business in which you have a financial relationship with. Proof of intent is not required for this, and it can result in fines as well as exclusion from the federal health care program. The Exclusion Statute. As we talked about earlier, many of the penalties involved in committing Medicare or Medicaid fraud can get you excluded from participation in any federal health care program. The Exclusion Statute makes it so that if you are convicted of one of these and put on the list of excluded individuals, you are not allowed to participate in any federal health care programs. And it may, requires you to not employ or contract with individuals or entities that have been excluded in which federal health care programs reimburse for items or services. And at the bottom, we have a link for the list of excluded individuals so that you make sure that when you hire someone or conduct business with someone, that you are not doing business with someone who's been convicted of Medicare or Medicaid fraud. 
The Civil Monetary Penalties Law makes it possible for the OIG to seek civil monetary penalties for conducting any kind of fraud, waste, or abuse of federal health care programs. Now that we have a good understanding of what is fraud, waste, and abuse, we must now know how to prevent it. Um, we must comply with all applicable statutory and regulatory requirements, which we have just gone over, including adopting an effective compliance program. We must be vigilant and report any compliance concerns or suspected violations that you are aware of. And the main thing to do is to follow your organization's code of conduct. One of your roles in preventing fraud, waste, and abuse is being able to report it. I have put on the screen here many different ways in order to report suspected or known cases of fraud, waste, and abuse. You can do this anonymously, you can do it through email, phone number, or do it through the OIG website. And we must remember that the whistleblower, law, whistleblower laws allow for you to be compensated for reporting misuse of federal health care programs. Now we will go over good practices in order to make sure that you are not conducting any fraud, waste, or and abuse of federal health care programs. And the main thing that we need to focus on is maintaining accurate coding and billing. And one of the main issues we see with coding is what is called upcoding, which is using billing codes that refer to a more significant illness than existed or a more expensive treatment, which could be fraud or abuse. Maintaining accurate coding and billing is essential to staying out of cases of fraud, waste, and abuse. Now we will go over some examples of fraudulent billing and the different penalties that are associated with these cases. A dermatologist was sentenced to two years probation, six months of home confinement, and a $2.9 million fine after he pled guilty to one count of obstruction of criminal health care fraud. The dermatologist admitted to falsifying lab tests and backdating letters to referring physicians in order to substantiate false diagnoses to make the documentation appear that his patients had Medicare covered conditions when they did not. Another example was an endocrinologist billed routine blood draws as critical care blood draws. This is an example of upcoding. He paid 500, almost $500,000 to settle allegations of upcoding and other billing violations. Another important practice to implement in your office is to keep proper and accurate documentation. Good documentation ensures that your patients receive appropriate health care from you and other providers who rely on your records. This is also the best defense if there's ever a challenge to the integrity of your billing. And, like we talk about in many other aspects when it comes to health care, if it is not documented, it is not done. In order to recap what we've gone over today, two key points that we've gone over are awareness and knowledge. You must be aware that you will be the target of a scheme, as there's too much money to be made in this business. Understand what is constituted as fraud, waste, and abuse, as we've gone over today. Be aware if you are a witness to any kind of fraud, waste, and abuse. And the main thing to sum this all up is to act with integrity. Use common sense to decide if the actions you are taking are wrong and follow the proper code of conduct of your organization. And in order to combat any kind of challenge to your integrity, you must maintain proper documentation. Thank you for attending today's training. My name is Joseph McCoy. I have my email and phone number up on the screen here, or you can find us at HIPAAcompliancekit.com. If you'd like to view this webinar again, it will be available on our YouTube channel. Just search for HIPAA TV. If you have any other questions about uh, Medicare and Medicaid fraud, feel free to contact us. Um, if you have any other questions about HIPAA compliance in general or the new information blocking law, we also have information on that if you would like to contact us. Thank you for your time.